Today, we're gonna sterilize our water system and I'm gonna show you how we do it. We have a new Camp Sierra's 920 truck camper and this is the process that we've developed over the last two years. The last time I sterilized the tank was about five months ago and it's time to do it again. We have full hookups where we are right now so we're gonna take advantage of that because it takes quite a bit of water to get this done. The first thing that I start off with is bleach. So we buy this non-scented, regular old bleach from Walmart. It lasts us like a good year and a half just on this one bottle. The ratio that they recommend is a quarter cup for every 16 gallons of fresh water or a quarter cup for every 15 gallons of fresh water. It's pretty close to us and I tend to use the quarter cup for 15 gallons. It gives us a little bit more concentration and it gets the job done a little bit faster, I think. Our fresh water tank is 38 gallons, so I'm gonna use somewhere between a half cup and three quarters of a cup of bleach. The other thing that I compensate for is I, I do use a little bit more bleach because the next step is to add it to the tank and then you have to flush water through all of your lines so that the bleach gets distributed throughout the water system in the camper. But then I have to refill the tank to top it off so that when we go drive around a little bit to slosh the water around, that the concentration is still high enough. So I always go a little bit stronger Maybe I shouldn't. If you guys have more information on this, let me know down in the comments, but that's what I've been doing for years. The next thing that we're gonna do is take our measured out bleach and dilute it into about one gallon of water. I'm gonna accomplish that with just an empty one gallon jug. Just try to rinse that last bit of bleach out of the cup. And then I'm gonna to top off the jug. And I would recommend using clothing that you don't care about because it's inevitable that you're gonna splash bleach on yourself, especially when you're filling your tank. So the next dilemma that I've run into is I never have a funnel. We have a small rig and I don't carry a dedicated funnel for use every six months. So when we know we're getting close, we just take an old drinking water bottle and save it. And I use this as a funnel. That's a tough That's bottle. A tough bottle. This will fit into our fresh water fill and then I can just pour the water in kind of like that. So the other thing is to make sure that your fresh water tank is about half full because you're gonna add your bleach solution and then you wanna fill it back up to the top and you want it to mix as it's filling. If it's already full, it's not gonna mix as well. In preparation for this, I made sure that I drained my fresh tank down to about halfway. So it's actually about a third of a tank. So we have plenty of space to fill it back up. All right, so I have my bleached water and my funnel, and we'll go outside and fill up our tank. So before we add bleach to the system, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I bypass my hot water system, which on our camper is right in here. For our camper, we have an Aldi system. New Camp has installed this hot water bypass, so I'm just going to turn that up, and that's going to isolate the hot water heater from the cold water system so that we can run bleach through the system without it affecting the Aldi. The Aldi has its own sterilization procedure, which I'll show you towards the end of the video. So we have a pretty standard uh, freshwater gravity fill system that most RVs come with still. Unlock it. And this is where I often get bleach on me. Now I'm going to top my tank off with the bleach solution in it. While this is filling up, I also want to talk about some stuff we've learned about water filters. So we generally get our water filters from Walmart and they sell this cheap blue water filter. And we also found this clear 2O water filter. It has a lower flow rate, but it has one micron filtration versus I think this is either 75 or 100 micron filtration. When we're doing high volume water applications like flushing our system out, we're gonna use this filter. But when we're hooked up to a drinking water supply, oh, it's full. 
When we're hooked up to a drinking water supply, we've been having really good luck with this. The water quality is much, much better. However, they clog up much faster. So when we have a really good clean water supply, like we do where we are right now, I'll leave this for when we don't have a good water supply. We were really impressed at how much better this is at filtration, but we've noticed that the flow rate slows down much faster than this style of filter. With these, we can get three to six months out of them. With this, I would say you're gonna get two to three months out of it. But for us, it's worth it because we live in our camper full time and water quality is pretty important. Whenever we're at a place and we're gonna top off our fresh tank or refill our spare water jugs that we keep in the truck, we'll use this so that we know we have nice clean water in the camper. I'll leave links to both of these in the description below. The next step is to run water through all of the lines until I smell bleach coming out. So let's go do that now. So I'm gonna turn my water pump on. I'm gonna run each faucet, including the hot water faucet, until I smell bleach coming out. Now, the hot water faucets aren't gonna run water through the hot water tank, but it will run the bleach through all of the lines so that I know everything in the camper is sterilized. I tend to start with the faucet that's the farthest away from our water pump, which is in our bathroom. So while we don't actually use this for drinking water, we do use it for brushing our teeth, and while we're doing it, we might as well sterilize everything. The first faucet takes a while because there's a lot of water in the line. All right, starting to smell bleachy now. I'm gonna switch it over to hot water. Because I want the entire system sterilized, I actually also run it through our shower head. Doing this ensures that the entire system is clean, not just the lines leading to your main faucet. All right, so now I'm gonna repeat the same process for the hot water. That smells nice and chlorine-like. I even go as far as to make sure that I get some bleach out of the toilet. We have a small truck camper, so we don't have too many faucets to deal with, but this is our main drinking faucet. We use it for cooking, cleaning, brushing our teeth, everything. So I really make sure that this one has plenty of bleach in it. So I have to be honest, I'm having a hard time smelling the bleach. I know it's there, but I just can't smell it for some reason. I don't know why. This has happened to me in the past a couple times, and what I found is if I just touch my tongue to it, I can tell when it's actually coming out with bleach. You may not want to do that, but I'm okay doing it. So that's bleach, and now I'm gonna do the hot water. That's sufficiently bleachy. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is something that a lot of people don't talk about. I'm gonna do our outdoor shower as well as our low point drains. I can show you where these live on our camper, but you're probably gonna to wanna to check with your manufacturer to find out where your low point drains are. I don't view this phase of the process as critical, but I do like to get some bleach running through there just in case there is something growing in there. I wouldn't wanna find out later that I had something brewing in those lines that somehow made its way back up to my main drinking water area. This is our outdoor shower. I'm gonna start with the cold water. Letting a little bit of bleach water run on the ground isn't gonna kill anything because it's so diluted. I just wouldn't wanna dump my entire tank on the ground in one spot. We always do this whenever we have full hookups because you're gonna use a lot of water and you don't wanna let your bleach water run all over the ground. At least let it go into a sewer system of some type. Bleachy. The last thing that I do is make sure that I flush all of my low point drains, which are right here. So first I'm gonna start with cold. Hot. Watch out for those splashes. I also use the low point drain for my freshwater tank to make sure that the water feeds out through that line as well. There we go. Takes a little while for this one. All of our faucets and lines have bleach in them now and we have to go do chores and laundry. So we're gonna go for a drive and slosh all the water around in the tank. But before we do, I'm gonna make sure that that tank is topped off again because we did use quite a bit of water flushing the lines out.
By making sure your tank is completely full, it ensures that as you drive around, the entire surface of the tank is getting contacted with the bleach solution. That the water is not going to contact very well if you keep the tank level too low. So that's why we always top it off when we're done with this process. All right, that's nice and topped off, and now we can go for a drive. A lot of people recommend leaving the water sit for at least 12 hours or overnight. But since we're full time in our rig, we don't really have that luxury. So we like to do it in the morning. We always bring extra drinking water with us as we go off to do our chores. So we'll be gone for say four to six hours. And then when we come back, I'm gonna do the process of flushing everything out. We found that a lot of full timers tend to do the same thing where they'll let it sit for four to eight hours and then flush it because we just don't have a full 12 hours to let it sit. But considering we do this more often and we keep our water system in use all the time, we're not quite as worried about problems that can occur if you let your RV sit over winter or for the summer. We're very diligent with this, but I feel like that four to eight hours for us is plenty of time to kill anything that might have been growing in there. However, if you're buying a new RV, a used RV, or your RV has been sitting for a long time, you may want to let that bleach solution sit for 12 to 24 hours to make sure that it does its job. So we're going to pack up, we're going to head down to town, we're going to do laundry and grocery shopping, and then when we come back, we'll show you the remainder of the process that we need to do. All right, so we're back from all of our chores and grocery shopping, and it is uh, about eight o'clock, which means we've had the water sitting in the tank and the water lines for about eight or nine hours now. So we're gonna flush it. I will let this run until the tank's empty, and then I'm gonna refill it with fresh water and then probably flush it one more time until all of the bleach is out. All right, so it's been five or 10 minutes and I have the kitchen sink running on hot and cold and that's because I want the bleachy water to run through the lines as much as possible. Also in the bathroom. In the bathroom, I have the bathroom sink running and the shower head running both on hot and cold. And that's gonna give me the maximum flow rate that my pump can put out. And you're probably wondering if it's bad for the pump to run it continuously like this. And to the best of my knowledge, all of the research that I've done, all of the documents that I've read say no. These things can be used continuously. The only thing that you don't wanna do is let it run out of water completely and run dry for more than a few minutes. So this is a process that you really wanna monitor. I'm watching this, eventually the pump is gonna start sucking air, and that's when I'm gonna go outside and add more water to the tank, fill it right back up, and do this entire process again so that I can completely flush all of that bleach water out of the tank. So something that I didn't mention earlier is that I have my gray tank open and I'm hooked up to a sewer line because by doing this, I would easily overfill my gray tank. So as you're going through this dumping process, you wanna make sure that you have your gray tank open and that you're connected to a sewer line of some type. Because for me, this is gonna take somewhere between, I would say 60 and 100 gallons to completely flush this tank out. We have a 38 gallon fresh tank, and I've learned that I need to fill and drain that fresh tank about three times to really get all the bleach out of the water. All right, so the pump has slowed down and it's kind of slowed to a trickle now and I can hear the pump is sucking some air. Rather than shutting this all down and going outside and filling the tank up and then coming and turning it on, I'm just going to go outside and start filling the tank up which will reprime the pump and continue the flushing process without me having to come in and out to start and stop the faucets. I already have this set up. It's I just take this and I put it in my fill and I'll just turn the water on. And in this particular situation, this is gonna fill the tank much faster than my pump can pump it out. So I'm gonna stay out here with this and let it fill up. And once it bubbles back out, I'll shut it off and then I'll go inside and wait for the pump to pump the tank down again and I'll do this probably one more time. This takes much longer to fill because while I'm filling, I'm also pumping it out the other side. The other reason I like doing this is that I get much more flushing action by doing both at the same time. It really gets that water running through there. As long as you have sufficient water supply to handle that. So you're gonna make sure that wherever you are, you have unlimited water access. 
All right, so the tank is full again. It's overflowing. I'm gonna just let that sit there and then let the pump inside continue pumping that tank out again. In the past, Sasha and I have made the big mistake of we were at a campground, I, I flushed it out a couple times, and then we hit the road, only to find that the water was still very bleachy. And that meant we had 38 gallons of bleachy water to deal with. So we ended up having to dump all of that and find another campground to fill up again. And as you know, we like to boondock all the time. So it's kind of disappointing when we get trapped having to go and find a place to fill and dump. So while I wait, I wanted to touch on the water pump. Uh, I decided to pull the cover off and just check the pump to see how hot it is. I would say the pump's been running for maybe 25, 30 minutes now. It's lukewarm. I would say it's probably 90, 95 degrees. So it's not overheating. It feels fine to me. One of the main reasons I wanted to sterilize our water system, aside from it just being good maintenance, is that I recently added an accumulator tank. We've been having issues with irregular water temperature when the pump cycles off and on while we're taking a shower. We always take kind of your, your standard Navy shower where the water's off and on, and then when it is on, we usually let it trickle, so it's not like full blast. While we have it trickling, the pump will come on and off, on and off. And those pressure fluctuations tend to make our water mixing valve go hot, cold, hot, cold. And that's when I decided to do an accumulator tank. Cheap fix, I wanna say it was like 25 or 30 bucks. I bought it off of Amazon and wow, what a huge difference. It makes the pump cycle far less often and it makes it much more predictable to take a shower. It just installs in line with your system and it, it adds, I don't know, maybe a cup, cup and a half of additional volume. Anytime you add something new to your water system or open up the lines like I did, you really wanna re-sterilize it because you don't know what you've introduced to that water system. So now everything in here is sterilized. I just have to finish flushing the tank out pumping air again so I'm gonna go out and refill it one more time I'm gonna let that fill up and this should be my last time once it's filled I'll taste the water and make sure it's not super chlorine -y. I'll finish flushing things like the outdoor shower and the low point drains just to make sure I get all the bleach out of the system all right so that's pretty much it um, the tank is full and the last thing I'm gonna do I'm still running a little bit of water through it is I'm just gonna open up my my low point drain for the cold Now the hot. And just the fresh, fresh tank drain. Get the shower out, turn it on, do the cold. Since I'm not drinking out of these connections, I just want to run a little bit through it just to make sure I get the concentrated bleach out. It's getting late now. It's about 9.30. I'm trying to finish this up. The last thing I have to do is finish up with my hot water tank. I'm going to go inside and do a quick taste test just to make sure that I got the bulk of the chlorine out. Nice and fresh. So I've been doing this for about an hour and my water pump is still maybe, yeah, 90 degrees. It's, it's just, it's warm to the touch, but not hot. The water tastes nice and fresh and I'm going to remove the bypass for the hot water tank. So now it's back to normal. So even though we have full connections, what I'm gonna do tonight is when Sasha and I take showers, do our dishes, I'm gonna run it off the tank. And when we get ready to leave tomorrow morning, I'll refill the tank and that'll kind of complete the process and make sure that I have all really fresh water. So now I have all fresh water, everything tastes great. All of my lines have been sterilized and flushed. The only thing that hasn't been is the hot water tank. And Aldi has their own way of handling this. To disinfect the Aldi, it has a built-in system. I think they call it extra hot water or something like that. Uh, I'll put the manual on the screen. As long as you have your clock set, which I do, I'm gonna go to menu, go to the gear, and then I'm gonna follow these settings until I see this Pac-Man icon. So blue means that it's off, green means that it's on. So if I touch this, he goes green. This setting is designed to reduce the risk of Legionella, which builds up in stagnant water. It'll also kill just your typical bacteria that thrives inside of damp environments. As long as that's set, 
when I go back to here, it will automatically kick off at 2 a.m. It runs for 30 minutes and it kind of superheats the water. It doesn't say to what temperature. So I'll let it run overnight. And then in the morning, if I were to go back into this menu, this will be off because it will have already run. And that's what I'll do in the morning to check that it actually worked. That's what I've done every six months or so, sometimes every three months. And we've been on the road two years. We drink out of our faucet, our, our tank, all the time, uh, pretty much exclusively. And we've never had a problem. We do run it through our Brita filter, but we're also looking at maybe getting like a Zero filter or a Berkey or one of those other types of filters so that we have some more water options in the future. So now for the disclaimer. I'm not a professional. I've, I've Googled how to do this. I do it through my own experience, but your system may vary from mine. And I, I try to be really thorough with this process so that everything gets touched with chlorine. I know that most water tanks can be sensitive to chlorine, especially if it gets hot. So you wanna make sure that your tank is bypassed and that, there's, that it's not on. Just make sure the water's cold. Same reason I left our Aldi off the entire day so that nothing got hot. Just in case I made a mistake, uh, apparently chlorine and stainless steel, especially when the water's hot, is very, very corrosive, and I don't want that to happen to my tank. If you guys have a different procedure, or if you think that I made a mistake, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know. I'm trying to learn this stuff along with you guys. I think that my procedure's pretty safe, and uh, as long as I flush all the tanks out and get rid of that chlorine, uh, it hasn't been any issue for us. And if you guys are on the fence about whether or not you should or shouldn't sterilize your tanks, I strongly urge you, to sterilize your tanks. There's all kinds of waterborne pathogens that I've heard people get, and uh, all it takes is brushing your teeth with bad water and you can get really, really sick. So do some research on it and definitely, definitely sterilize your tanks, especially after your RV has been in storage. We use our rig full time, so the water's always getting used. We're getting fresh water every probably three to five days. Uh, and I'm pretty diligent about sterilization. In the future, I'd like to make a video that goes over water safety because there's some other steps that we take to ensure that we don't introduce anything bad into our water system. But for now, that's all I got for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.